All right. Uh, in this series of problems, or in this example, um, we're going to look at where or for what values of x does the series converge. Okay. Uh, our first series here is the sum from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n minus 1, uh, x to the n over uh, n. Okay. So we're going to use the ratio test to define or to describe how or where, uh, what values of x does this series converge. Okay, uh, so we'll, we'll consider this then our uh, u to the n term, and we're going to make a ratio. So we're going to look at the ratio of the absolute value of u to the n plus 1 divided by u to the n, and see uh, for which values does this uh, guarantee or show us, you know, which where the values are at, okay? All right, so um, let's go ahead and just see if we can squeeze that in maybe right here. Um, so let's see, we have that this is going to be equal to u to the n plus 1 is going to be a negative 1 to the n plus 1 minus 1, uh, x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. Okay, so that's u to the n plus 1 divided by uh, negative 1 to the n minus 1, uh, x to the n over n. OK? All right, so we're going to flip this bad boy up. Uh, and since we're taking the absolute value, these negative ones actually really don't matter, because the absolute value of them, regardless, is going to be positive. So we're really looking at just the ratio of these two terms. OK? So let's go ahead and reciprocate this one and see what we can do for simplifying. OK, so taking the u times the value of x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal here. So it's going to be n over x to the n. OK, and then uh, n is a positive number, so we can think about it coming out of the absolute value. And notice that um, I have a situation here. So I'm going to plot the n, n plus 1, because those are uh, natural numbers. They're going to always be positive, and the sum or ratio is still going to be a positive number. So this can come out of the absolute value. And then here, I'm going to rewrite x to the n as x to the n times x. Because when I have a like base, I can add the exponents. So if I resimplify this, this is x plus, or x to the n plus 1 divided by x to the n. And what that does is that allows me to see that I have a common factor that then I can reduce to 1, and I'm just left with the absolute value of x. So here I have n over n plus 1, absolute value of x. Okay. So um, if we look at the limit then, as n goes to infinity, n over n plus 1, absolute value of x, Right. Um, you can see here, uh, I can you can think about what happens to n as it gets really, really, really big, right? If you're thinking about it in that, that context, um, well, if you divide the numerator and denominator by the degree of numerator and denominator, which is n, okay, this is going to give us in the limit as n goes to infinity. It's going to give us 1 over 1 plus 1 over n, absolute value of x. This term will go to 0, and you're left with just 1. So this is just equal to the absolute value of x. Okay. By the ratio test, the series converges absolutely then for the absolute value of x less than 1 and diverges. So it converges for any any value in this range and diverges then diverges for absolute value of x greater than one. Okay, so let's check the endpoints then. Let's go ahead and check the endpoints then and see what we get there. Okay, so um, let's try at x equals one. Okay, if we plug in, if we plug in at x equals one. What do we get? Well, we would have uh, the series would look like, because I can maybe squeeze it in down below, or to, uh, let's put it right here. We're going to have negative 1 to the n minus 1 over, since 
it's one to the n. This is x, right? This is just going to be v one, or you could think of it as uh, I could add another value to that. Uh, but this is always going to be one, so it's not going to really change anything. Um, and then over n, okay, so it's this series n equals one to infinity, uh, which we can simplify as simply the n equals one to infinity of negative one to the n minus one over n. Well, this is the alternating harmonic series, which we know converges by the alternating series test. So we can say uh, by alternating series test, uh, this series converges at x equals 1, which means then that this interval, is, that interval is concluded. Okay. So what about at x equals negative 1? At x equals negative one since that's the other endpoint we need to consider uh what, what do we get there well uh if we plug in okay you're gonna get uh let's see we're gonna have um the sum from n equals one to infinity and we are gonna have a negative one to the n minus one over uh, n and then we have negative one to the n. Now this does play a role because n here uh, is negative, so it's, it's going to give us uh, various values, which can uh, significantly impact in, uh, the uh, overall value of, of our series. Okay, so let's go ahead and put these together. And what do we get? We have then that this is n equals one to infinity. Uh, negative one to the n, I have another n here with like bases. So this is going to be negative one to the two n minus one, adding the n and the n together. Over n. Well, this is an odd value of n here, right? This is an odd value for this exponent of negative one. And every odd value of a negative one is always going to be negative. So this is actually always going to be equal to uh, n equals one to infinity of negative one, just negative one to the n. So this is always negative. Well, this is really just the uh, negative harmonic series. Right? This is the negative of the harmonic series, 1 over n. So that does diverge. Okay. So this diverges, which diverges. It diverges to negative infinity. The harmonic series did, diverges to positive infinity, but this is the opposite of that sign. So this is diverging to uh, negative infinity, and so the the interval of of this uh, series converging would be from it's still from negative one to one, uh, but the radius of convergence um, is closed. It is closed on the right endpoint, but it is open on the left endpoint uh, since it diverges on the left endpoint, but it converges on the right endpoint. Okay, I hope that was helpful, and I'll see you uh, on the next problem. Uh, in this example, um, we're going to look at the series B here. And so we're going to use the ratio test one more time to uh, check for its convergence. And so uh, we're looking at the absolute value of u to the n plus 1 over u to the n. Okay, so plugging in uh, all these values. Um, to save a little bit of time, I'm just going to take the reciprocal of this u to the n and multiply it by u to the n plus 1. Uh, just so you, we saw that a little bit more explicitly in the last one. This is x to the 2n plus 1 divided by uh, 2n plus 1. Okay, that's u to the n plus 1. Um, and then this is u to the n plus 1 at times. Let's see, we have uh, 2 to the n minus 1 over x to the 2n minus 1. OK? All right. So uh, just like before, um, n is at, at least 1. So this value here will never be equal to or less than 0. OK? And so we can factor these terms out of the absolute value because they're always be positive. This will be 2 to the n minus 1 over 2 to the n plus 1. And then we have the ratio of the absolute value of 2x to the 2n uh, minus 1, plus 1, and x to the 2n minus 1. So I'm going to write, rewrite it, simplifying it just a little bit like I did last time, just to show the commonality of the 
ratio, okay? So to the n minus one, if I add exponents, and to the n plus one, if I add exponents, okay? Uh, you'll notice that the common factor of x to the two n reduces to one, and I'm left with x to the, or x to the first divided by x to the negative one, which means I can bring this negative exponent upstairs. And so I can finally rewrite this uh, simply as, uh, I guess I'll write right here, uh, two to the n minus one over two to the n plus one, uh, x squared and f of i of x squared. However, x squared is always positive, so uh, you can uh, remove the absolute value uh, at, the, at that point. All right, so let's look at what happens when you consider the limit as n goes to infinity. Um, we have two to the n plus one, oh, sorry, minus one on top, and then two to the n plus one over x or times x squared. Uh, so just like before, um, we're going to divide everything through by the power of n. And so this is just going to leave us with a ratio of 2 over 2, which reduces to 1. So then this value is equal to x squared uh, in the limit when n goes to infinity. All right. So uh, now that we know that, by the ratio test, this converges absolutely uh, for x squared so then that implies that this converges absolutely for x squared less than one, okay? And diverges, diverges, oh, if I could spell that would be helpful, diverges uh, for x squared greater than one, okay? That says diverges. So it converges here, it diverges there. All right, and so now we wanna look at the endpoints of this radius of convergence. And so uh, if we look at x equals 1, and x equals 1, uh, the series becomes 1, negative 1 third, plus 1 fifth, uh, minus 1 seventh. So this is an alternating series uh, with odd entries, right? So these are all odd. This is an alternating series with uh, almost like an alternating harmonic series. Uh, and so this definitely converges by the alternating series. So it converges by alternating uh, convergence steps. Okay, so that definitely converges at x equals one. And then if we consider uh, at x equals at x equals negative one, um, you see that you get the exact. Uh, like literally the exact opposite of, of this. So if you can imagine just doing this, but change the signs. Okay. It's the exact same series, just change the signs. And so by the same by the same analogy, uh, it's the same series. It just converges uh, by the alternate names of series. So we can just say ditto, ditto on that one. <laughs> uh, so it converges uh, on the entire closed interval, so the, the entire closed interval from negative one to one uh, is the radius of convergence and it diverges everywhere else. All right, I hope that was helpful. Yeah. All right, uh, welcome back. Uh, so this is example C. Uh, so we're gonna use the ratio test to see uh, what the radius of convergence is for this one. Uh, so plugging in the n plus one term, we're going to get the absolute value of x to the n plus one over n plus one factorial. And taking the reciprocal of u to the n, we're going to get n factorial over x to the n. Okay. Uh, note that n plus one factorial is equal to n plus one times n factorial. And so allowing us to see that allows us then to see that there's a common factor of n factorial on the numerator and in the denominator that we can reduce. Likewise, x to the n plus 1 is the same thing as x to the n times x. And so there's a common ratio of x to the n's that we can reduce to 1 and a common ratio of the n factorial. Okay. Moreover, since x, or sorry, n is always positive, it's a natural number, uh, and adding to it, so it's going to be bigger than 1, uh, the absolute value of it is not going to affect the result, and so it's going to be x, absolute value of x over n plus 1 is what this reduces to, okay? So notice that this 
will tend to zero as n tends to infinity. And since that's true, then we can say that this series, uh, this series converges absolutely for all x. Okay. The upside down a meaning for all, for every x. Okay, so this series actually converges everywhere uh, for every x, which is really cool. Okay. All right, let's jump into the last one then and look at uh, example D. Example D was the series uh, that we have from n equals 1 to infinity of uh, n factorial x to the n. Okay, and so if we wanted to see how does this series converge or what is the radius of convergence for the series, we're going to use the ratio test one more time. You do the n plus 1 over u to the n, absolute value on that side which is going to equal the value of u to the n plus 1. So it's going to be n plus 1 factorial x to the n plus 1. And then um, uh, we can take the reciprocal, and we would get n factorial x to the n. Okay, And just like before, uh, in the same same fashion, uh, this is n, time, n plus 1 times n factorial. And this is x to the n times x. So this is equal to, or this reduces to, uh, n plus 1, even though I don't need to keep those in yeah. that absolute value, uh, x, um, which we could then reduce to n plus 1 absolute value of x, okay? So notice that um, this ratio, right, so in the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 x absolute value of x, this whole thing tends to infinity, okay? Which means that uh, this is true for all x except when uh, x is equal to zero. When x equals zero, uh, you get zero times this, and so uh, this whole value would just equal zero at that point. Okay, uh, so this only converges, so it converges at x equals zero only. So it, it converges at a single point, which is at x equals zero. All right. All right. I hope that was helpful and I'll see you in the next example.